half a million people or more expected there. There will also be protests, uh, acts of remembrance for the victims of abuse and other victims of Catholic institutions taking place this weekend. So a different atmosphere for sure from 1979 and the adulation that greeted John Paul II. We will bring uh, coverage of all of that to you. Right now, it's back to the studio. Anita, thank you very much. And from our travel show. Mauritius, a force of nature in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Mauritius is marking the 50th year of independence from British colonial rule, but the intriguing, rich and sometimes dark story of this island nation goes back way before then. On my journey, I'm going to explore the history of Mauritius. See and taste how multiculturalism works here. Mmm, that is nice. This island is so often labelled as just a luxury beach paradise, but the reality is so much more fascinating than that. Mauritius, gorgeous beaches, turquoise waters, and lush vegetation. But the human story is just as awe-inspiring. Le Morne Mountain on the southwest of the island faces in the direction of Madagascar and stands 555 meters high. It's also at a 45 degree incline. And in this 50th anniversary year of independence, it seems the people of this island have plenty to celebrate. During my time here, I've seen a strong sense of nationhood amongst Mauritians and also a realization that precious wildlife must be protected. This is a relatively prosperous country, breaking free from its complicated and sometimes shameful colonial past. And what's exciting is that right now, its unique cultural identity is still evolving and making it so much more than just a high-end holiday hotspot. I'm Anita McVeigh, live in Dublin. The headlines this hour. Pope Francis has arrived in Ireland for the first papal visit in almost 40 years. The Pope is expected to be welcomed by around half a million people in Dublin. But the visit comes as criticism continues about the Catholic Church's handling of child abuse by priests. We'll bring you full coverage of the Pope's visit throughout the day. And I'm Sean Lay in London. The other headlines this hour. 
Women in England are to be allowed to take the second of two early abortion pills in their own homes instead of in a clinic. Holidaymakers arrive home after being flown back early from an Egyptian hotel following the unexplained deaths of a British couple there. Thousands of Rohingya Muslim refugees have taken part in a demonstration marking one year since their exodus from Myanmar following a military crackdown. The family of Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe, a British Iranian woman imprisoned in Iran on spying charges, are fighting for her three day temporary release to be extended. It's always been sort of steps forwards and steps back, so I, I shouldn't get too ahead of myself. Um, but, but hopefully, hopefully uh, it'll be a, a good day today and a good day tomorrow. Hello and welcome to Dublin, the setting for uh, the papal visit, the visit of Pope Francis this weekend, the first visit by a pope to the country in almost 40 years. 1979, John Paul II, that was the last time a pope came uh, to the country. Ireland has changed uh, vastly in that time in terms of uh, society, its uh, relationship with the church, and of course, in that time, many dark scandals have come to light, including the abuse of children by Catholic priests and in Catholic-run institutions. So it is a different Ireland that this Pope is coming to. Uh, let's just take a look at uh, uh, the live pictures now as uh, the Pope's motorcade makes its way from Dublin Airport uh, to Arison Uchtarain, that is the official residence of the President of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, who is going to be greeting the Pope uh, shortly along with uh, his wife, Sabina, 